Welcome back to Muff, which is Minutes Until Fit. My mission here on this channel is to spread awareness about health, mental issues, and the overall body. We will discuss hardships we experience in life and how these things have impacted our lives. The information contained in this video is of general nature and does not constitute medical advice. Talk to your doctor for your individual circumstances. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel at the end of the video. This week, as I stated before, will be colorectal cancer. Colorectal cancer is a malignant tumor arising from the inner wall of the large intestine or rectum. Colorectal cancer is the third leading cause of cancer in both men and women in the United States. The colon and the rectum are the final portions of the tube that extends from the mouth to the anus. Food enters the mouth, is chewed and swallowed, then it travels into the esophagus and then into the stomach. The stomach is where the food is ground into smaller particles, then it enters the small intestine. The small intestine is the area for final digestion of food absorption of the nutrients from the food. Food not digested or absorbed enters the large intestine and finally the rectum. The large intestine acts primarily as a storage unit for waste, some water, salts, and some vitamins that were removed are stored in the colon and periodically passed. What is cancer? Daily, our bodies go through a huge process of destruction and repair of cells because the cells wear out or are destroyed. Every time a cell is destroyed, the body makes a new cell to replace it, trying to copy the cell that was destroyed. The replacement cell must be able to perform the same exact function as the destroyed cell. The body makes tens of thousands of mistakes while replacing cells. Many errors occur. Random errors and outside pressures placed on the replacement process promotes errors. The uncorrected mistakes have little effect on health, but if the mistake allows the newly made cell to divide and develop differently than normal cell growth, it can begin to multiply in an uncontrolled manner. When this occurs, a mass of abnormal cells can develop, resulting in a tumor. Cancer sheds cells that can travel through the blood or lymphatic system, landing in tissue distant from the primary tumor and growing into new tumors in these distant tissues. This is called metastasis. Cancer is a group of more than 100 different diseases, much like infectious disease. Cancers are named by the tissue from it arises. So if cancer starts in the lungs and spreads to the liver, it's not considered liver cancer. It's described as lung cancer metastasis to the liver. What is colorectal cancer? Colorectal cancer starts when the process of the normal replacement of colon lining goes haywire, causing abnormal cells to grow and divide. They can lead to growths called polyps. Polyps vary in type, but many are precancerous tumors that grow slowly over years and do not spread. When polyps grow genetic mutations, it further retards the cells. When precancerous tumors change direction, growing into the wall of the tube rather than into the space in the middle of it, it invades other layers of the large intestine causing the polyps to become cancerous. The process is sometimes slow, taking years to develop from precancerous cells into full-grown cancer. Colorectal cancer is typically a adenocarcinoma, which means the cancer has formed in certain types of lining tissues in the body. Adenocarcinoma arises from the mucosa, the inner layer of cells. The cells are exposed to toxins from food, bacteria, and mechanical wear and tear. When mistakes happen during cell replacement, it leads to abnormal cells and uncontrolled growth of the abnormal cells that give rise to cancer. What causes colorectal cancer? Researchers are still studying the causes of colorectal cancer, but precancerous growths cause abnormal cells to accumulate in the lining of the colon, forming polyps. Untreated polyps can become cancerous. Gene mutations are caused by a mutated gene which passes from parent to child. Mutations increase your chances of getting colorectal cancer. Stages. Stage one. The cancer has penetrated the lining of the mucosa of the colon or rectum, but it has not spread to the organ walls. Stage two, the cancer has spread to the walls of the colon or rectum, but hasn't affected the lymph nodes or nearby tissues yet. Stage three, the cancer has moved to the lymph nodes, but not to other parts of the body yet. One to three lymph nodes are involved at this stage. Stage four, the cancer has metastasized and has spread to distant organs or lymph nodes from the original tumor. Types of colorectal cancer. The type of cancer depends on the types of cells that turn cancerous and where the cells form. The most common type of colon cancer starts from adenocarcinomas, 
and this forms within mucus cells in the colon or rectum. These types are less common. Lymphomas, where the cancer form in the lymph nodes or colon first. Sarcomas, where the cancer form in the soft tissues such as the muscle in the colon. Gastrointestinal stromal tumors, where the cancer can start off being benign and then become cancerous. These usually begin to form in the digestive tract, but rarely the colon. Symptoms. Symptoms are numerous and nonspecific. Symptoms may not be present in the early stages. Symptoms are more noticeable in the late stages. Stages one and two. Constipation, diarrhea, excessive gas, abdominal pain, changes in the color of your stool, blood in your stool, bloating, changes in the shape of your stool like if it's more narrowed and looks as if it didn't all come out, abdominal cramps, bleeding from your rectum. Stages three and four, excessive fatigue, vomiting, unintentional weight loss, unexplained weakness, feeling like your bowels don't empty all the way, changes in your stool that last longer than a month, symptoms when the cancer spreads to other parts of the body, chronic headaches, bony fractures, swelling in your hands or feet, blurry vision, breathing difficulties, jaundice, yellowing of the eyes and skin. Risk factors. Age is one of the main risk factors for colorectal cancer. It's usually diagnosed around age 50 or after 50. Race. African Americans and Jewish descent are more at risk than other races. Diets high in fat. It's believed that the digestion of fat that occurs in the small intestine and colon leads to the formation of cancer-causing chemicals, carcinogens. Veggies and high-fiber food like whole grain breads and cereal contain less fat and may counter the effects of the carcinogen. Chronic ulcerative colitis. This causes inflammation of the inner lining of the colon. Bowel cancer is a recognized complication of this disease. Risk for cancer increases after eight to 10 years of having the colitis. Genetics. First degree relatives with colorectal cancer doubles your risk of developing the cancer. Hereditary colon cancer syndromes. Chromosomal defects are inherited at birth and are present in every cell in the body. Familial edematous polyposis, FAP, is one hereditary colorectal cancer syndrome people develop. Hundreds, sometimes thousands of colon polyps grow starting during their teens. People affected by FAP is almost sure to develop colon cancer by 40 years of age and are at an increased risk of developing other types of cancer. FAP arises from a mutation in a specific gene called the APC gene. Attenuated familial edematous polyposis, AFAP. This is a milder version of FAP and people affected by it usually develop fewer than 100 colon polyps. There is an increase of colon cancer at a young age. Hereditary non-polyposis colon cancer, as known as Lynch syndrome or HNPCC. This is also a hereditary colorectal cancer syndrome where affected people develop colon polyps and cancer. It's usually in the right colon in their 30s or 40s. They are also at an increased risk for developing other cancers. MYH polyposis syndrome is a hereditary colorectal cancer syndrome that causes affected people to develop 10 to 100 polyps at around age 40. Unavoidable risk factors prior history of colon polyps, having a genetic syndrome, your age, prior history of bowel diseases, family history of colorectal cancer, and race. Those risk factors are unavoidable. You can't stop those. So you have no choice but to deal with it if um, those are some of your risk factors. But we do have avoidable risk factors like having a non-active lifestyle, having type two diabetes, Smoking, diets high in processed foods or red meats, heavy drinking or alcohol, being overweight or obese. If you keep yourself active and eat right and drink less alcohol and watch your weight and quit smoking, those things help decrease the risk of getting colorectal cancer. Diagnoses. Early diagnosis is your best chance of curing it. You will need to see a gastroenterologist if you suspect or notice anything unusual. The doctor will ask for medical and family history. The doctor will do a physical exam, press on your stomach, perform a rectal exam to determine if there's a presence of lumps or polyps. 
There are several tests that can be ordered to help the doctor diagnose the issue. Colonoscopy inspects the entire colon and is more accurate than other tests and is considered the best test to use when cancer is suspected. This test confirms the diagnosis and locates the tumor. Sigmoidoscopy examines just the left colon and the rectum. Carcinoembryonic antigen, CEA. This test consists of the lab drawing blood from you to check for this tumor marker. Some colorectal cancers do not produce CEA. CEA levels are also elevated in people who smoke but don't have cancer. The doctor will also order other tests like the liver function test and the complete blood count to rule out other diseases or disorders. X-rays. For this test, the medical staff will use a metallic element barium solution to complete the test. The solution is inserted into your bowels through the use of an enema. The solution coats the lining of the colon. The solution improves the quality of the x-ray images. CAT scan or virtual colonoscopy provides the doctor with a detailed image or picture of your colon. Treatments. Treatments of colorectal cancer depends on a variety of factors, like your overall health and the stage of your cancer. These facts will help the doctor come up with a treatment plan best for you. Stages one and two, usually surgery is the only treatment needed. For early stages of cancer, the surgeon may remove cancerous polyps through surgery if the polyps haven't attached to the wall of the bowels. Surgery is the most common initial medical treatment for colorectal cancer. During surgery, the doctor will remove the tumor and a small section of surrounding healthy tissue along with nearby lymph nodes. The rectum is sometimes removed permanently if the cancer is located too low in the rectum. The surgeon can usually reconnect the healthy sections of the bowel, but if that's not possible, you will be required to receive a colostomy bag. That is where the doctor creates an opening in your stomach called a stoma, and there's a wafer and a bag that is attached to it and to your stomach, and your waste from the colon is released into the bag. Chemotherapy that uses drugs to kill the cancer cells in colorectal cancer. Chemotherapy is a common treatment after surgery that's used to destroy any of the remaining cancerous cells. Radiation, a powerful beam of energy that targets and destroys cancerous cells before and after surgery. Radiation commonly occurs along with chemotherapy. Medications, Stervarga treats metastasis or late stage colorectal cancer that doesn't respond to the other types of treatment and the cancer has spread to other parts of the body. The drug works by blocking enzymes that promote the growth of cancer cells. Preventative measures. Get a colonoscopy at age 50 or before if you ha are having any signs or symptoms. Decrease the amount of red meat and processed foods you eat like hot dogs or deli meat. Exercise daily, decrease the fat in your diet, quit smoking, eat more plant-based foods, lose weight if needed, and reduce your alcohol consumption. This has been your host Imani. Thanks for tuning in to Muff once again. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel. Be safe and blessed. Until next week, peace.